this is sort of like a small tube box and about 14 inches. I'm planning on putting a small radio in here. Uh, this is like a walkie talkie. So this battery or maybe I'll put other things in there too. Maybe I'll put in a lithium box. This is actually more useful. This has the USB output already. So I don't really need anything. I don't really need that, but since I have that, so I'm trying to make use of it. And I put in some USB uh, LED. So it's not really wide in yet. So it's like that. It's pretty bright when I turn the LEDs on. It uh, shines the lights on the outside, also lights the inside of the box. And there's a variable resistor here. If I turn the resistor, if I can find my screwdriver, if I turn the resistor with a screwdriver, it will dim. It will dim the light if it's too bright. So that's what it's for. But basically, I'm setting it on high because there are only four LEDs and. I'm planning on putting radios, maybe a Ziploc bag. Yeah, I just disconnected the wire. A Ziploc bag and you can put your money or documents or whatever in there. And of course, uh, this is the top. And I like this part here. So I can attach a small solar panel here. One point to 1.8 volt and just, just prop it up and charge the 6 volt battery and this would be my small emergency kit so that's why I was looking that charger uh, thing uh, I would like to make this a smartphone compatible too I have a USB charging board here. If you input 0.9 to 5 volt and then in input uh, over here, it would output 5 volt over here. And you can charge your cell phone or whatever USB devices you have. Uh, the only thing is, this will not be recognized by a smartphone because the data pins here, D plus and D minus, there is no uh, voltage on it and usually for a smartphone to recognize the board you need some kind of voltage here since this chip here uh, can only uh, work to maybe up to 600 milliamps I'm gonna set the voltage output to 2 volts if you output 2 volts here on the data pins here uh, an iPhone or iPad or actually uh, it won't charge an iPad an iPod here would recognize this device can only put out 500 milliamps and it will only draw 500 uh, milliamps so uh, what you need here is two pairs of resistors I got this information of uh, an instructable uh, by Caffeine Omain and the resistors that he was using is a 330 ohm here on the left and 200 ohm on the right and the center of the resistors are tied together so uh, the 200 ohm leads on the right here will be soldered to the ground and the pair that is tied in the middle will be soldered to the D plus which is the data pin uh, this will be the third one here if you count this as the fourth 
and then the 330 ohm lead will be soldered to the 5 volt pin here and then another pair of this will be soldered uh, exactly the same way except that the middle leads will be soldered to the second pin which is the D minus over here uh, I hope this will show up in the uh, in the video here this is two three four and this is one so by doing this uh, D plus and D minus should output uh, two volts and this will signal to your phone that uh, this is uh, the device that can put out 500 milliamps and it should charge at that rate. It will be a little slower than if you have a board that is capable of 1 amp. Or if you need to charge an uh, iPad, you will need 2 amps. So this would not really charge an iPad well, and but it should charge any old phones or... Uh, a smartphone. Okay, I'm going to solder and see what the outputs are uh, after I have done it. Uh, okay, now I finish soldering and I've got the board hooked up to a lithium ion battery. It's 3.7 volts or so. Probably about 4 volts uh, because it's charged. And it's hooked up to the input here. Input positive, input negative. And I have the two pairs of resistors hooked up. And if you notice, the twisted pairs are actually touching. And uh, in the instructable, um, the middle two pins, number two and three, are actually um, what they call soldered together. And uh, that is okay because uh, in this instance, we want it to output two volts so since they're both the same pair of resistors uh, what you're getting is two volts and in my case it's not exactly two volts uh, if you measure it I think I was getting 1.94 volt between uh, before and let's see here if I can show you Okay, this would be the ground, and this would be number three, 1.94, my fingers in the way, and ground and number two pin, again 1.94, and the ground and the positive pin here, this is actually the the power pin would be 5.14 which is uh, spot on it should be about 5 to 5.2 so it's a little messy here with all the resistors in the back but there's actually really no room in the front to solder anything okay I'm gonna plug in my old Ericsson phone. I don't really have a smartphone, so unfortunately I can't check to see if this actually works. But for my old phone, it uh, it works. The thing is worrisome though. Uh, when I plug in my charger doctor, the charger doctor doesn't come on. So maybe it's because um, the data pins are shorted or uh, the data pins are putting out the voltage and is somehow making it not work with the charger doctor and uh, this gives me a little uh, pause as to how well this actually works uh, it didn't seem to there's no smoke anyway uh, no smoke when I plugged it into the when I plugged it into the cell phone 
and when this is hooked up with the lithium ion battery it doesn't get hot at all so it seems to work and the charger doctor works if I plug it into a regular USB port and the phone works if I plug it into a phone so the only part that doesn't seem to be working is the charger doctor maybe someone can explain that to me